Tonight, we begin a special four-part documentary series called State of Emergency. News 21, a national reporting initiative based at the Cronkite School, brings top journalism students from across the country together to report and produce in-depth pieces. Tonight, the focus is on forgotten communities. Hurricane survivors dealing with the aftermath from wind and flood damage to lasting psychological trauma. When Katrina struck New Orleans, I was 14 years old. We didn't think that it was going to be as bad as it was. Hurricane Katrina was unlike any other emergency that we've ever had. It was vast and scary, and we were ready for the hurricane part. We were not ready for the flood part. When the levees broke and the water started rising, they were trapped and they couldn't get out. I just got terrified all of a sudden. It was like impending sense of doom. It was like an out-of-body experience. It was something I never in a million years could have imagined. I knew floods happened, but to think like my whole childhood was underwater. This is incredible damage. I mean, it's just the neighborhood is gone. We we're getting water from the river and from the sky. The wildfire war is not a war that we will win. If ever the cavalry was needed, it is now and it is in New Orleans. It always happens to everybody else. Sometimes we're that everybody else. You do what you got to do to survive, and so that's what we did. I just thought that we were going to die. I lost 100% of everything. We have to start somewhere. We have to rebuild. We can't keep losing people like this. We got to help each other. We will find ourselves facing another disaster, and it's only a matter of time about when that will be. You don't know where it's going to hit, and you don't know when. You can't beat Mother Nature. Ahora mismo en La Vega, en una escuelita abandonada. Aquí llevamos nueve meses. Pues ese día pues estaba nerviosa. <ríe> Porque me metí tanto eso, el pensamiento en la, así en, en la cabeza. Y me puse nerviosa, ansiosa, <ríe> desesperada. Y por la noche no pude dormir. Me dio hambre. Veía cuando los palos caían, cuando sonaba el viento bien feo. Y así estuve toda la noche. Me sentía nerviosa. También era la primera vez que, o sea, pasaba algo así y yo estando con mi papá. Y yo ver que mi papá no podía caminar tanto, pues me daba un poquito de miedo. Porque yo decía, si le pasa algo. Luego del huracán, en noviembre, y le dio un dolor. Pues lo vimos jaro. Le dijimos, vamos para el hospital y no quiso. Y yo, no, yo... Eh giéndome para darle fortaleza, le dije, Pal, es que vamos. Pero que no aguante el dolor, le dije al jato, le dije, pues vámonos para el hospital. Pues me dio duro porque primero fueron tres infartos. Eso fue en, como en diciembre, diciembre más o menos, antes de diciembre. Fue un mes después de María. Y me dijo, estás vivo de chiripa. Pues llegaste a tiempo. Y dije que pues, gracias a las nenas, no, no estaban conmigo hace años. Pues yo fui la que recibí la noticia y la impresión. Y pues me quedé sin palabras, me quedé en shock. Empecé a, empecé a llorar. Y pues no sabía qué hacer. Salí, la busco a ella. Y ella me dice que qué le pasaba. Y yo pues no, no tenía palabras para expresarme. No. Entonces después de eso papi salió y no podía trabajar ni nada, el dueño de la casa le puso un desahucio y lo llevó al tribunal. Para mi papá, por pues, tanto, pues papi no sabía, buscó casa, no encontró, fue a la alcaldía, le dijeron que no podían atenderlo, fue a sesión 8, le dijo que no había ni voucher ni lista de espera. Pues unos vecinos me dijeron, mira, este, vete a vivir a la escuelita, porque la escuelita la tienen de, de animales. Y para que hayan animales ahí, mejor estén tú y tu familia ahí, aunque sea un techito protegiéndote. 
fue lo último que nos quedó y nos metimos aquí, limpiamos y aquí estamos. Siempre me he encerrado muchas cosas en mí misma. Eh, muchas veces yo no dejo que él se dé cuenta. Pero cuando se da de cuenta, viene donde un... ¿Qué te pasa? Y yo, nada, pero... Solamente con él decir una palabra, un abrazo o algo, me llena de felicidad. I think the big challenge is, particularly for smaller rural parts of the government, is they don't have the people to help manage disasters. It's oftentimes the first big disaster they've had. In many cases, they're spending so much money, they're borrowing money just to pay bills because their costs are just off the charts. They may have smaller populations, but I think the demand on the recovery and the management of that is actually much harder for them. I think we need to weigh our programs more towards how do we provide more technical assistance to the smaller jurisdictions, which may not be required in our larger communities. I know what you're trying to say, though. No? See me and not my disability. Amen. Well, I gotta say, see my ability and not my disability. Yes. That is a radio show called Reflections. After I lost my sight, actually, Recently, when I hooked up with Doug, he's like, maybe you need to come on my, on my show and be my co-host and stuff like that. I've been there ever since. And you were at home through the whole hurricane? Yeah. It was horrendous. The first hurricanes I ever experienced in my life, I had vision. Now that I'm visually impaired or blind, it took on a whole different aspect of it. Before I could see the devastation, no, I'm listening to it. I could hear it. So it sounds almost like uh, one of those big Boeing jets when it's about to land, but amplified like a hundred times. The house itself is intact, but the roof has been damaged, I guess, by flying debris. During the storm, water came in from all the windows and doors. My whole entire floor was soaked with water couple of weeks to months or something like that afterwards, I just heard that this loud crash, almost like glass breaking. And when I came and I find out what was happening, my tile rose up almost like a, a mountain on either side. It just collapsed and broke apart. And we signed up for FEMA. FEMA came and looked and looked and looked. They sent several groups out to my house, but they never did anything. So when it rains, I got drips of water all over the place. And then they came and they put like a tarp over it, but still it stopped in one area, but didn't stop in others. We have a crew that's going around fixing houses. Unfortunately, I'm on a waiting list. You know, it's my first time in here since the sun though. I remember how it was. My bed was there. My bureau was in the, close to the window. My little night table was over here next to the door. Cheese on bread. Still licking. Oh, Lord have mercy. That was terrible. Whew. Every time I was hearing a crack, I said, uh uh, another part is gone. The last one was this side of the house. And I said, okay, everything gone. We are right here, same spot, waiting for answer from the last program from FEMA. If we approve, that is a big relief for me because that program will construct, build a house from bottom to top. We already go and apply and the lady says, uh, we have a chance because we are disabled, the three of us. <laughs> hmm. Carmen, because of her blindness, and because I have a pacemaker, and my husband, because he, he has the, the vascular dementia. The possibility is that we move to Puerto Rico. We have a place in there. That is the way that we might need to take if don't get 
positive result for this last attempt. I have one hundred twenty thousand dollars for the house. I have the twenty and I need the hundred. Mm -hmm. So this is the last chance. The new program, the build and rebuild. I understand some system is not going to stop coming. And every year is going to be worst. I don't know if I'm going to still here for the next one. Sandy, compared to any other one we had, topped them all. Topped them all in devastation and loss and fatalities. A lot of people drowned. I never want to see another Sandy again. Not in my lifetime, not in anyone else's, but especially not in mine, not again. That's why I get hyper when it rains hard, because, you know, I remember within a half an hour that I, that I left my house, it was already, you know, the water was already here. Now my neighbors from here were driving down Adelaide screaming, the water's coming, the water's coming. The life lost was the worst, you know? I had two dogs, I lost them. We never found them. And then finally everybody left. This is what, you know, this is what's left of it. Like five or six of us left. We all knew each other, so it was like one big happy family. And then now everybody's scattered because, because of Sandy. And that's it, it made it sad for everybody. There's no place for us to go, not today. And today's market, you can't, not at all. The future sand is always in the horizon, worrying the horizon, so. And then when it's hurricane season again, we get nervous because you never know. We were expecting minor flooding, you know, that, but nothing is devastating the sand. And that's what worries us still today, seven years later. Our block is changing a lot. People are selling now because the prices are high. State of New York, they didn't offer us what we needed to buy something else. They offered $220,000. In New York, $220,000 is nothing. Land prices here are astronomical. We don't know what they're doing here. And then we're worried about if they decide to make it eminent domain. And then they'll give us whatever they want and we'll have to leave. And then we'd have to be, you know, happy with whatever they give us. But where we're gonna go anyway, we can't go with what they wanted to give us in the first place. We're the afterthought. We were always the afterthought, even before Sandy. All we wanted was to be treated fairly. That's it. You got to remember, the FEMA assistance isn't going to make anybody whole. It's only if you didn't have insurance, and only if you don't have the ability to pay a loan, that you may be eligible for a FEMA grant. Most families, or most individuals, following as head of household, get between five and $8,000. Now, five to $8,000 is not gonna make you whole. It's not gonna do substantial repairs. It's not gonna replace your damaged home. It was never designed to. It was designed to help you start your recovery. But it was never the long-term solution. But I think people are so focused on FEMA is the answer to everything, that even understanding the programs, the only things you're really not getting is that grant dollar and the housing assistance. And to a certain degree, the long-term housing, which FEMA doesn't do, is actually a HUD program. People think that we're fully recovered. They have no clue how bad it is still here. The priority should have been housing. That should have been priority, not restaurants, not stores, not anything to do with tourism. It should have been the housing. That was where they messed up. Shortly after the hurricane, the TDC Tourist Development Council got this big old grant to say, hey, Panama City Beach is all right. So people see all these ads across the nation Panama City Beach is all right. And so they think Panama City is automatically Panama City Beach, and it's not just come across the bridge. People are thinking we're gonna be back to normal two, three, four, five years. It's not gonna happen. Neighborhoods are changing. Houses are being destroyed. Prices have doubled and tripled. Transitional shelter assistance has run out. Now there's no place for them to live. A lot of the companies that did open back up couldn't stay open their regular hours because they didn't have people to work. The lower income people that have those jobs, waitressing, fast food, they can't afford to live here. The federal government in major disasters steps in 
with some assistance, and that supposedly is FEMA's job. Federal response, I think it's been very thin here. If you look at what's going on in Washington, D.C., everybody's just battling. It's red versus blue, Republican versus Democrat, and we're caught in the middle, it's pretty clear. And if you look at federal response to previous events, in Katrina, it was within days. You know, Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Hugo, generally there's a pretty substantive federal response within days. We're seven and a half months out, and we've seen anemic federal response. Came here in March. Didn't want to ask for help. Didn't want to really come here, but it's better than where we were going to go. We were going to find a vacant lot somewhere and park the RV there. We're all here to save money and be able to put ourselves up in nice homes whenever the housing market goes back down to its normal pricing. I had the house built 20 years ago. We've never lived in a house by ourselves. This is my husband and I all our lives. This is not us just because of Hurricane Michael. We've always been helping people. So when I said this isn't right, somebody's got to do something, there was no hesitation. Yeah, I remember. Oh, he's chewing on you, Victor. Shelly's a blessing for doing what she's doing because a lot of us would be probably sleeping under a bridge or under some tree somewhere. Shelly takes the time to actually build friendships with people. She's got quite a few of us that she views as her children and her and Sam are pretty much putting everything out of pocket to take care of everybody here. They're sleeping in a tent, which is not by any means ideal. They have the comforts of home at the same time, and there's really no other option for them. There was some people sleeping in tents on the beach, and beach police told them if they caught them out there again, they would take them to jail without any indication of where they may go. We have spent a lot of money on this, personal money, my husband and I but that's okay and we would do it all over again. Our goal is to help them get on their feet, save their money so when the time does come and whenever they get the housing available, they have the money to start over. The hugs and the tears of gratitude. That to me is the best part. And I've made some amazing friends through all of this. And my family's just gotten bigger. You know, I have a huge family anyway, now we're even bigger. <laughs> I evacuated, I went to the shelter. September the 13th, I went to the shelter. And I haven't moved back home yet. Still this place. The money ran out, so right now I'm just, I'm homeless. So I always say that whatever is in the community before the storm gets amplified by the storm. So if poverty is already an issue, then it's a greater issue. It gets magnified in the storm. The impact, the ripple effect of what happens in marginalized and low wealth communities, it cannot be underestimated. We have so many families that live so close to the edge that a storm, a natural disaster, like Matthew and especially like Florence, can tip. It can tip them into a hole that's very hard to get out of. Would a tip be helpful? Yeah, it would. Would that give you some more rest? Yeah. And would this I lost my job and everything just just seemed to come crashing down. I went into a state of depression myself, you know, you know, taking on so much because it was overwhelming. And, but it was good to know that there are organizations and people out there that love you and care for you and, you know, help you along the way. I was by myself until, uh, you know, I reached out because in order to get help too, you have to go out there and look for it too. It's like looking for work or anything else. I was really impressed that it was so many different organizations that did help people. It's a lot of great agencies out there that's helping, but you know, it's all a process, but it's a long process. Sometimes you feel good, sometimes you don't. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yep. Local community nonprofits, communities of faith, truly are stellar in doing as good as they can. Government agencies, unfortunately, in my experience, aren't the best conduits of that kind of help. We appreciate all the help, but if we were depending on government programs or funding from that source, we wouldn't be able to survive. I just think that it's very essential for people to be involved with long-term recovery because you know you have so much support in the beginning as you start to get back on your own feet, 
and that's when people kind of like disappear and you need that long term. My son, he took his life four years ago and just thinking about him, you know, and just us playing around and being a child, that's what one of the fondest memories, you know, and so this is why being here is so meaningful for me. If I could have anything back, I'd rather have my son back, but we know that can't happen. You know, to think about all the good things taking place, it's just so many good memories, but again, I'm ready for the new challenge in life. I'm a survivor. You know, it's easy to give up, you know, even though against all odds, you know, I, I can't, I refuse. In my heart, I feel like I let my son down. I just gotta keep moving forward just for him, for me, and the rest of my kids. We just ask a blessing over him, Lord, and just pray that you just help his house to get rebuilt quickly, Lord, so that he can move out of this tent back into his home, Lord, and just get himself reestablished, God. It was like three days before my birthday, and that's the only present I got from Maria, <laughs> that I lost everything. But. The next day, we woke up, we all see the leaves, the branches on the floor. All the community and all of our neighbors, we went outside and cleaned everything up. Estoy tratando de no llorar, but es como si fuera, como ahora mismo, ya no es, no es como lo mismo que Huracán María pasó. Y es que yo creo ahí, como que si algo le pasa a la casa de alguien, yo estoy ahí por esa persona. It would probably take a few years, I don't know how many, but we're trying our best to fix it and trying our best to fix it fast. La gente no estaba unida para ese tiempo. No había compartiendo, no no había unión este familiar entre otras familias. Sí, María me azotó de una manera que si yo no hubiera estado con las nenas y hubiera estado solo en ese momento. Yo creo que el día de hoy yo no estuviera aquí. En mi percepción, a pesar de todo lo que hemos pasado, estamos más unidos que nunca. Eso le sirvió a ellas de experiencia. Ya ellos saben cuidarse. Ya ellas saben este, pues, lo que vale el ser humano, lo que vale la naturaleza. No esperaba que tantas personas fueran a ayudar, que fueran a, a darnos cosas para empezar a construir, pero Hemos construido poco a poco y hemos arreglado un par de cosas. Pues decirle a la gente, pues, que nos llevemos como, como familia, que estemos más unidos, porque unidos vamos a hacer la diferencia aquí en Puerto Rico. Pues si lo hacemos como hermanos, todos logramos hacer esto. Te diría, yo estoy preparado para un segundo huracán. No me va a coger desprevenido como me cogió el primero. Ha sido una experiencia maravillosa a pesar de todo. Esta aquí pues me gusta. Y yo te digo que si nos dan el permiso de esto aquí, levantamos esto poco a poco porque yo me quiero quedar aquí. Y en esta parte nos tocó caer y poco a poco vamos a levantarnos. I have so much and I will never ever take having a home for granted. I just think about so many other people who came back to a lot instead of a house or who got stuck and were sitting in a hot attic all day for days with no food, trying to figure out if anyone cared enough to get them. Quit calling people disaster victims and call them survivors because I think there's this tendency that somebody else is always gonna take care of us or that the public is just waiting for somebody to come rescue them. And too many disasters I've been to, the first response was not even the people with lights and sirens, it was neighbors helping neighbors. I think that's what got us through the storm, everyone, is that we just really came together. And I am so beyond lucky that I was born here and that I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna stay here as long as I can. Well, I could not imagine my life without New Orleans at all. 
it's a spirit that this city has. It's just the way we move, the way we interact. What does recovery mean to you? Does it mean that you need a job? Does it mean that you could get to your, your place of employment if you had a car? Does it mean that your place of employment is gone, but you're really talented and skilled and you could be picked up by somebody else? Is it more child care? Is it health care? I guess we do kind of gauge time and like measure our lives in <laughs> Katrina. I mean, it was taking someone's life and just flipping it upside down and it took so much effort and so much time and so much collaboration and just so much energy, physical, emotional, it was draining. So how do you not think of life before and after? 